to our graduating students, class of 2019-2020. But before then, I'd like to express my deepest gratitude to the founders of this great academy, the Case Taylor School, Barry Starr and Mrs. Emma Sorbonne, and also um, the father of the day. I got to know you as general, but I should have asked about your name. So, dear sir, it's good to meet with you. Our beloved parents, you've been amazing and awesome in supporting your kids and the school. So thank you so much for being present. And my most precious audience, the school pupils and students themselves. Thank you so much for being here. And of course, without a doubt, members of the press, good afternoon. Good afternoon, good morning. Good morning. It is my duty. Can we please have some quiet? Make a huge difference to the students that bear them in mind and actions them as they graduate from this school. Because success doesn't just happen by chance. And believe me, even those who are born into privileged homes still have a huge burden in either growing the success that they were handed or determining their own success in life. So by and large, of course, you are all privileged to have attended one of the greatest schools in Nigeria. But beyond these borders depends on the efforts you deploy, conscious efforts you put into practice every day that will either make or mar your future. And in speaking today, even though I'm giving 10 minutes, I will try to speak within the time. I'm going to use myself as a practical example. Oh my God, I'm electricity. So as I'm saying, I'm going to an example. By chance, when the proprietor of the school spoke about the story of Amir, I was drawn to tears. I had no choice but to stand and give him a hug. Because even though I am not an orphan, I practically share a similar challenge in life. Now, Today, I'm going to pass on to you graduating students. Well, this lesson is not going to be limited to the students themselves, even parents, because growth and awareness to success can be called upon you at any age. After all, the founder of McDonald's created, established McDonald's in his 50s. So it's never too late to turn a new leaf and determine your own path to success. So, I'm going to title today's valedictory speech, Don't Forget to Dream. Don't forget to dream. I grew up in a big village named Ihima in Kogi State. Now, this is a real life story. I did not have the benefits of the technology we all have today. Most of the time, we did not have electricity. So to read at night, I had to rely on candles and our local lanterns. How many of you have, have seen the local lanterns today? You? That's the one you use with kerosene. You're all privileged children. I thank God for your life. So, imagine me standing today before you, pretty much 30 years ago, I had to use candles and the local lanterns to read. But you know the books that were my favorites? The encyclopedia. One thing my father did, do you mind if I take this down? Because it's actually distracting me. I should have come up with some clips to hold it in place. Quiet, please. My father, even though he wasn't wealthy, pretty much we call ourselves average poor. He never joked with the amount of books we had at home. As a matter of fact, if he had extra money, instead of buying clothes or put fancy food on a table, he got us books. So we had pretty much three sets of encyclopedia. And I recall now, from the early age of six, 
I would sit before bedtime reading book after book. Pretty much I read an entire set of the encyclopedia before I was the age of 15. And you know what? Sitting there in the village in Ihima, surrounded by hot houses, we had farmers, and of course the beautiful masquerade ceremony, which was the peak of my watch let's say activity every year. I delved into these fancy stories in the books. I read about Mandela, then he was in prison. I read about Cleopatra, the dynasties around the world, the industrialization, how America developed, how France, and all these beautiful words. But you know what? When I closed the books and I looked outside the window, I saw poverty. I could not connect my reality in the village with what my father was exposing me to in the books. And as a matter of fact, that got me angry most of the time. I would ask him, why do I read these beautiful stories in the books, but I can't see them out there? And you know what my father would tell me? I want to open your mind to dream so that you can see what is possible. And maybe you and your generation and the generation after you will be able to make Nigeria as beautiful as what you read in the books. So that was the start of my ability to dream. And I'm telling you now, you are a better chance. In your hands, I'm sure every one of you, you have access to mobile devices. You probably know about YouTube and other social media. So instead of taking your time to probably listen to the latest songs, try and research and read more about or video, watch videos of clips of things that are happening around the world, of possibilities, of young inventors. Young inventors, young innovators. What is happening in Ghana? What is happening in America? What is happening in South Africa? What are your mates achieving? And then try to deploy that to yourself and to your immediate environment because everything on earth starts with a dream. Because that is where your vision grows. And from your vision, your actions will set in place. Nothing happens by chance. As you're all here seated, if I call with you students, some of you will tell me that in five or ten years, you want to become doctors. Some will want to become politicians. Some will want to become artists. Whatever it is, that ability to determine how you want your life to be starts with a dream. And you know what, if you're going to dream, dream big. There is no limit to dream because dreams are free. So that's one. My second lesson in life is, thank you so much, please don't have to stand, thank you. I hope you are taking note of it. Don't forget to dream, that's one. The second, nobody owes you anything. Nobody owes you anything. So if you are here, seated on a privileged horse, just know that everything your parents, every effort your teacher has put in place, is all an effort to contribute to your growth. But they do not owe you. And I'll tell you when I realized that. My father of blessed memory died 22 years ago. I was barely 18. And upon his death, the burden of being the breadwinner of the family rested upon me. Imagine at the age of 18, I had an elder brother, two younger brothers, a mother who is a foreigner. And practically at that time, my father's businesses ran down because he was a medical doctor. His hospitals closed. And of course, I faced challenges with my relatives from my father's side. So we were pretty much alone. And at the age of 18, I became a breadwinner. I had to send my elder brother to school, put myself to school, and my younger ones to school. By God's grace, my elder brother is a medical doctor. I'm a lawyer. My younger one is an architect. But you see, for many years, I carried anger in my heart. 
anger towards my father. I would say I was angry that he had to die. Why did he leave without any savings? He didn't prepare me for this life. And believe me, nobody gets prepared to take such a way with body at an early age. Nobody. Nobody. You might think I have uncles, aunties, just the grace of God that some family members are remembering. Beyond that is you, yourself, God, and your family, your immediate family. So like I said, for many years, I carried on, should I say, anger and resentment towards my father's death. Why did he have to die? Especially when in university, I saw maybe parents visiting their children, you know, some students talk about allowances they got, or holidays they were making abroad, or books, you know. I would, in my own quiet, sit down and reflect in my life. Why didn't my father save enough? Why did he die poor? I asked all these questions. But one day I sat and I said, you know what, how long will I carry that in my heart? He probably did his best. And then I asked, there were students, there were people on earth whose parents died, maybe at a very tender age when they were toddlers. And there are some students, some people who became successful and they grew up in the orphanages. So if my father died at the age of 18 and I still have my mother alive, maybe I should just become positive in my mind thoughts. And then I stopped blaming my father. I stopped having any resentment. Because and I realized then that maybe he didn't even owe me anything. Maybe the food he put on the table, I was grateful for that, at least it kept me alive. The little clothes, even though I didn't have fancy clothes, but they are enough to cover my nakedness. So when I thought until today, everybody I come across, even through my career life in the energy sector, I always looked at every goodwill everyone offered me as a privilege, because I knew they didn't have to do it for me, they didn't owe me nothing. And that made me very strong-willed and self-resilient. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now some of you here, I'm sorry to say this, but I have three children. My first son is 21 years old. He's in university in UK. My second is 14, going 15. And my third, my girl, she's 11. And I see sometimes the past this privileged attitude to me. Mommy, I want this. You promised me this. My friends have this in school. Maybe they don't really understand the challenges I have. But I'm here to tell you, children, that whatever your parents are doing for you to even attend such a good school is a privilege. So you should be grateful for that. Now, mention the third. Because when you understand that nobody owes you anything and everything you have, you should be grateful for that. That now brings us to the third lesson. What did God say about a grateful heart? When you express gratitude for the smallest things, more come to you. Do you understand? Am I communicating with you? When you live here, you must be grateful for anything. A cup of water, thank you. A tap promotion, thank you. A book, a colleague might lend to you. University of Abuja. I struggled to pay my school fees, but gratitude opened doors. Gratitude. You must be thankful for everything. Even when you approach someone for a favor and they say, I'm sorry, I can't give you that favor. Thank you for even hearing me out. That alone will open doors because you don't know who is watching and you don't know who that person And most importantly, you don't know the grace of God around that time. But when you asked and it was rejected, or maybe it was given, God will bless that appreciation. Then another is action. Action. Now when you have dreams, you have created a vision in your head of what you want. You also understand that nobody owes you success but yourself. Nobody owes you achievement but yourself. And then you apply gratitude for every iota of goodwill that comes to you. 
The next is action. And I'll give you an example. If I'm thirsty and I don't stand up to get water, will I ever have that water? No. Or if I'm thirsty and I don't voice it out, oh, I'm thirsty, can I have water? You see, action, one action means much more than a thousand intentions. You, you, most of you are going to go to great universities. But the university will not make you. You will have to deploy adequate conscious action to get the kind of grades you want out of that school, which will open doors for the kind of life you want in your chosen career. Action means everything. We are in today's, uh, I would like to say this again in action. Some of you here might think you are too young, but I bet the average graduating student should be over the age of 15, right? Can we have some SS3 students? Where did the graduating class? Where are they? Beautiful. Someone else? Are you? What? 18. How many of you have heard about Malala? When she started advocating for climate change? She was 15. She's just 17 now. Malala is just 23 this year, but she started advocating for the girl child education when she was at the age of 15. So, what am I going to tell you? You are not too young to start deploying the right action. My quietness, every lesson, every word my teachers or any visiting guests made got into my ears. And it wasn't as school as good as this one, but I was extremely hungry for knowledge, extremely hungry for wise words. So please, the future you desire tomorrow will not be far-fetched from the lessons you implant in your heart from the words you hear today and always. So like I said, action, starting now. The world owes you nothing. The power of having the future that you deserve lies in your hands, not your parents, not your teachers. Along the journey in life, you will come across many opportunities. Prince Teachers Academy is an opportunity. What you have learned from all the years you've spent here should amount to a reasonable effort in shaping your, your future at university. But like I said, all at the end of the day, amounts to the kind of actions from you are going to deploy it from the very first day. And also, beyond your academic environment, beyond the walls of your university, you should look at your immediate environment and ask, what does Nigeria desire from you? Is your voice strong enough? Yes, it is. Are you male or female enough to begin a stir of change? Yes, you are. Like I said, you have in your hands the most important resource, your mobile phone or internet, should I say. When you are using that device, deploy, deploy your attention to productive searches. If I tell you today, please, one assignment. When you won't go, if you like, I can see you are almost, I can bet we have over 200 pupils in this hall. But I'm very sure no more than 10 will get home and conduct this simple assignment. And the assignment is this, when you get home, open your computer or your mobile phone device and search 10 great inventor, inventions by teenagers and let that motivate you. You will see that you are not too young. You are not too young to start a change. And for the graduating students, those of you who are 18, oh, the 2023 election, I should speak about politics, but everything in life starts and ends in politics, especially when it has to shape the society, growing the economy of any country. And all of you here, irrespective of your career choices, you will definitely need to be active in politics because the policies that your leaders will bring forth will determine the quality of the policies, will determine the quality of leadership you have. Am I making sense? I would love to see that by 2023, even before then, a group of students from this great institution will come together and start a change of group. Start 
a chain of good governance series. It is not, it's not too hard for you all to do. Maybe I should call someone to repeat what I just said. The gentleman behind, come, I've seen you are coming to talk about climate change. Nothing stops a paid student from advocating for a better Nigeria. As a matter of fact, when students, if imagine an 11 or a 15 year old kid addressing the National Assembly in Nigeria or speaking to the president or the governors, the country will listen. Because you will make more impact because you will have more sympathy and more attention. Are you understanding me? That is what is missing. Your involvement. You don't, you need to assume your rights and your power. Come on, darling. What's your name? Give me love. Give me love. Which the governance status quo of Nigeria today? Are you happy? And what do you think about it? Um very satisfactory to us as students and as graduates of Abiyan today. We live like this. To be worried that when we go outside, we cannot sleep free. And because we enjoy ourselves in crime, because as we call it, so protest and generation, the future will make a new way make a new way for us, all of us, to live freely and enjoy ourselves with us being safely and securely. Thank you so much. Thank you. So basically, easy to be called and to speak. And he made a lot of sense. Basically, he's calling on all of you to join forces, join voices, join actions. Because you are the future of this country. And you have a huge role. In the terms, he made reference to the fact that every Nigeria's life matters. But you know what? I'm going to watch all of you and I will not hesitate to be a mentor if any group comes up in determining good governance and better at the electoral processes so that we can all have better and credible leaders beyond 2023. So, in rounding this, I'm all going to go to the beginning. Do not forget to dream. Don't forget to dream. Whether you're going to dream of a bigger Nigeria, dream of a better career, dream of what you are going to do in goodwill, in, in, in gratitude to your parents and teachers and, the, and, and the, the proprietor of the school. Everything starts from dreams because that's where the ideas get implanted and your actions generate towards. So God bless you all. I wish you a great life. I know you are going to succeed beyond measures. I'm looking forward in no near time to have amazing patriots from this great country.